Can you hear me? Yes. So welcome. Welcome, CCL. We're excited to have everybody here. We have practitioners around the room and around the Zoom who are holding the high watch so that we can let go of everything and anything but this moment right here, right now. So we can be present to this service, present to each other, present to the divine, knowing that we are completely taken care of, that this is where life happens, is in this moment and this moment and this moment. So let's be present and praise, praise our connection with the divine. All right, everybody. Repeat after me. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and peace. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and joy. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and joy. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and complete health. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and complete health. I open my heart to the universe, accepting love and abundance. <laughs> my heart to the universe, accepting love and abundance. And so it is. And so right here and now, in the invitation of this morning, in the invitation of this space to just simply release Release, release, surrender into this moment and know that there is a power in this universe that we call love, God, infinite intelligence, creative culminations, divine possibility, Allah, Buddha, and many, many, many other names, whatever name appears for you this morning, the invitation to surrender into the knowing of one field in which all things are, all beings, all knowings, all humans, all light, all love permeates all. From this place, we breathe together deeply. We know our place as one with this divine energy. We know this service is one with this divine energy. We know all of life is one with this divine energy. And as that is the case, we are free. We allow that which is good and very good to come in through and as us permeating all of the spaces of our lives knowing nothing is outside this beautiful love and that anything that is moving, anything that is a circumstance in life that we don't see yet as part of this, knowing that it is still held as are you, as are we in all ways. This blessing of the knowing of our oneness of the knowing of our wholeness, of knowing of the divine truth of who we truly are is the biggest blessing in our lives. And we allow ourselves to breathe deeply into this space, knowing that this service flows in its own blessing, that each moment, that each thing, that each opportunity shows itself as another place to pour our love, to pour our love, to pour our love, and to give and give and give from the giving that we have begun by receiving. And so we take this breath together. We allow ourselves to fill ourselves up in this space with love. And as we release that, we include our love in everything and everyone else. Knowing that today, all of the beautiful music of Ginger Coil, 
of all of the design of this service that's playful and may surprise you in a couple of places of all of the things that are going to unfold that we call right or wrong or good or bad are simply all good. We keep our universe whole as one, looking for the gifts here today. We know that the word is being spoken, that the blessings are being given and received, and we are grateful to be here as a community in love, and grace and peace this morning. And so we take the seeds of all of this and we plant it in the field of divine possibility. We release all of this knowing that we play in the fullness of life today with joy, with the blessings of love surrounding everything. And we say together, and so it is.
Trust you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Trust to get through to all the standing, you know? Yeah. Don't want you guys to get tired, lethargic in your chairs. Okay, affirmation in your bulletin. Repeat after us. I am the wholeness and power of this universe. I am and the, the blessings, blessings and the, the grace of, of this love. I am the holiness and devotion of this heart. I am, I am the, the truth and, and the purity of this light. And, and so it is. Thank you for staying. So many fun sounds today. <laughs> I'm going to sing this Blue Doty song. I think we could sing. I think we could sing that with her all day. With Lou, with her. We should send him a little message. Or maybe he can feel it anyway. Let's send Lou a little appreciation. Like whew. Lou Doty, in case you don't know, was a member of this congregation for a long time and created a lot of music here and uh, brings forward a lot of warmth and love in people's hearts. So I hope you can feel it tingling through you. Well, I surprised myself this morning by leaving out a section of the service. So the sermon is faster and quicker than I was expecting it to arrive, but here it is. And I figured out a way to add it on the end, what I left out. So no worries. So it's Rosh Hashanah. And there's so many incredibly beautiful things about the fact that it's Rosh Hashanah. 
And one of them is that this congregation has been invited into a journey also, not just with Anton, but with AGNT, which is the Association for Global New Thought, which uh, was started by Reverend Michael, Dr. Michael Beckwith from Agape. And it is an association of centers that come together because they know that we believe all the same things in new thought and that they didn't feel anymore like there was any sense of separating us. Anton does the same thing and they both have distinctly different personalities. And the joy of AGNT is that it's where we get our season for nonviolence from. And we love that. And we practice that every spring for 64 days between the memorial of the death of Gandhi and the memorial of the death of Martin Luther King. They have just given us another gift, which is a season for interfaith and intercultural celebration, which is September through December. So all of the holidays and all of the cultural gifts of this season are incorporated in one big basket. And we can all abundantly enjoy the unfolding of fall and into winter and the coming of the light and all of the festivals of light. We can enjoy them together. There doesn't have to be a separation. This is my holiday and your holiday. This is our time of interfaith and intercultural celebration. Now, I also was informed twice this week, and thankfully one more time again this morning, thank you, Melissa, and thank you, Marlene, that this is um, the month, September 15th to October 15th is, say the words exactly, Hispanic Heritage Month. So that will also flow into this same, very same interfaith, intercultural celebration. So just let yourself feel the expansion of here we are in this small town in New Jersey. And now we just plugged into the whole entire world, certainly our country, but we know that we're plugged in all the way across the globe. So just notice how much more space that gives you inside. It's not just this life we're talking about. It's not just CCL. It's not just New Jersey. It's just everything. And what this time appears to be about in our culture is accepting everything as it is and allowing each thing to be permeated and permeated and permeated where it is with love. Let the love go into the roots and let that excuse me, that which is a call to love burst forward in its new blossoming by the love and acceptance of each one of you and your beautiful hearts. Who would have known that that was all you had to do today? A friend of mine and I used to joke when we would be on spiritual retreats, we're like, well, what did you do today? What did you do today? Well, today I'm advancing the consciousness of the human race. What are you up to? So don't forget, this is no small task to love when we don't want to love, love when it's hard to love, love when love is the last thing you can even imagine thinking, you still at least have the intention to call it back. And then you find someone with a kind and strong intention, you will find someone who will give you a lifeline, right? We all know that. How many times have we kind of hung out in it quietly in isolation because we were still attached to it before we let someone come in and remind us that we're bigger, right? It's like for a while. And now also we think about grieving. We think about things where our hearts were broken, maybe religious practices that didn't work for us, maybe cultural practices that didn't work for us. And so we get stuck. And somehow the stuck feeling gets comfortable. And we forget that we're not going for comfort. We're going for joy. We're going for magnificence. We're going for expansion. We're going for expression. But comfort can be very helpful sometimes. And so we make space for every part of the journey that each one of us as humans are on, right? It's like today, my journey includes isolation and closing in, and that's okay. 
and that's okay. And tomorrow my journey may be better and different. And even in the next moment, it may be different. And in the next day, it might be different. And it might not be for quite some time. We can probably all think back on times in our lives when those kinds of things held us for a while. Grieving is one of the ones I think that can be the most, um, what is it? I almost want to say obstinate, hard to break through finally to get back to life. We do get lost. We get lost in resentments. We get lost in unforgiveness. We get lost in places where our families left us or we felt left by them. And we stay there forever. And we miss out on the chance to be in this glorious life. I, someone on the internet said something like this yesterday somewhere. Um, just think, we could be eating strawberries in a field of flowers and instead we have credit reports and financial um, loans to pay back. And I thought, yeah, that's kind of, that is kind of true, right? We could be doing with this life very different things. Pay attention to what we're choosing. What are we choosing? So with Rosh Hashanah, I was really, I was really touched. So a season committed to global peace building through interfaith and intercultural understanding. So very first, for any one of you who celebrate with the Jewish traditions as your main traditions, we wish you Shana Tova, Happy New Year. So Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Happy New Year, Shana Tova, or La Shana Tova, depending on who you ask. So it's a two-day Jewish New Year holiday, and it's significant. And there are some lessons. What a surprise. Some spiritual lessons to carry us through. And so we just wanted to touch on these because it strikes me. Well, I actually wanted to go back to something funny that I was sharing with Reverend Paul. I went to the internet just to look something up this morning and, and new thought popped up. And these were the two definitions that I just thought I really wanted to share with you, even though one might scare you a little bit. Be cool with that, all right? So freewheeling free Christian faith. A freewheeling Christian faith. I'm like, here we go. Okay, that's one. And the other one was a religio metaphysical cult. Cool. Now we're on the map, right? It's like there's no such thing as bad advertising, right? So luckily that one's way down the list, but it did make me laugh. And I, I decided to ask you that if all of you wanted to turn your worldly possessions over to me, and if you didn't mind me driving a Rolls Royce into the parking lot, then we'll go back with this. Until then, I think we're good. All right. Are we good? Okay. All right. So my Prius is not going to qualify anytime soon. All right. So there are some things that I just wanted to bring forward about this holiday because what I what I one of the things that I really admire about the Jewish faith is that it's very grounded in this life, which I think is one of the things I most admire about religious science. It's very grounded. You know, in Christianity, I think I spent my whole childhood just trying not to be a bad person. Right? I was born a sinner. And that's what it was, you know, and I, I tried to get baptized and then I tried to get confirmed and I thought that would help, but I didn't feel any difference. So I'm just still trying to be a good person. I remember looking, literally saying to a friend of mine, if somebody would just give me the rules, then I could live a calm, like a calm and centered life because I would know what they were. The Ten Commandments are not a particularly good set of rules to live in this culture. I mean, yeah, you should probably not kill your neighbor you know, or steal someone's wife or husband, or, you know, those are probably good things not to do, but they're not like, how do I get through the day and how do I live, right? And then there's the seven deadly sins, which, you know, geez, bring it on, you know, and then, and then there's God in the sky and, you know, if you do those things, it was a lot just to cope with that, right? Christians have a lot to deal with. I don't know if Jewish people have the same problem, but Christians, you're like carrying this load on your back. That's like, I'm a sinner. Couldn't wait to get rid of that. That's why I'm here. So hopefully some of you have that same story. Now, 
so one of, so one of the things I love about the Jewish tradition is how based it is in the here and now and how the teachings teach the next generation how to do it so that you do it right you do it well and you have community that holds you up so just let me flow these by you and then we'll have another conversation so this time of year is for reflection and self improvement what was i up to hmm maybe that didn't go so well maybe i should try that again right reflection like really take the time to wonder and consider right now, you'll recognize this from where we are, setting intentions and goals. This is kind of an important thing to do. Let's decide where we're going in religious science. This is one of the funnest things we do is set a vision. And then who do I need to be to have that? And you just keep being that. And so you have a definition of who you want to be in the world because you've got this vision that says, I want to be that. Nobody else gave it to you. It was yours. You got to set it. You have a direct rapport with the powers that be they're inside you and you can go so setting intentions and goals it does involve repentance uh oh some of us have some to do and making amends so we all know that there are moments that we just completely fail right is there anybody in the room who doesn't completely fail are you <laughs> come here stand here <laughs> I love it. We all completely fail and we completely fail in some ways. It's so hard to actually get back up, right? Sometimes you're just like, wow, I am mortified. Sometimes people move because after they do something, sometimes people go to jail and that helps them cope with what they did so they can feel like they're actually in some kind of repentance and they can return to themselves. But many times, many times people get lost in the journey to get rid of the guilt or the shame of just being a sinner and being alive. So let's stop that one. We know we're all perfect, whole, and complete in the image and likeness of the God presence, the essence of life that we were born through, of, and as. If you imagine the universe of love. This, if you would do this with me, just imagine, you close your eyes or leave them open. They've got a nice big room here. Imagine yourself surrounded by a field of love and it, all you see is yes, 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 yes. You are perfect. You are whole. You are loved because that's what it is. That's what it can give you. Now our humanness, our ancestry, our who knows why all this comes to being is that we are also landed on this planet and we carry cultural conditioning and we carry family history and we carry genetic history and so all of that starts the nature and the nurture process of conditioning us away from the truth of who we are and so we misbehave and so we do things that break our hearts and break other people's hearts and so we have that. That's one thing. The other thing we have is a nervous system that tells us when something's off and we should be afraid and to attack. It doesn't actually work so well for us anymore. And it does actually operate all the time still. So when you feel that tension rise in your body, what we're in immediate choice to do is what am I going to do? Am I going to tell myself that I'm a bad person and here I go again and I'm just going to have to yell and scream and make a big mess of things just like I always do. Are we going to say, breathe, 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 because that is the only antidote to this system in your body that's trying to tell you that you're bad and wrong and you should be afraid. And the only person that's going to survive is you. That's all that system does. It doesn't care about anybody else. But we also have this other system. And how do we get there? How do we get there? We get there through forgiveness. We get there through loving. We get there through opening our hearts. We get there through affirmations. We get there through love, right? Forgiveness and reconciliation is part of Rosh Hashanah. It's not only being willing to say, hey, my bad, I did that thing. 
That was really, I was really out of line. It's the other part. Ready, everybody? Thank you. And I receive, I receive your apology and I let it go. So let's just take a moment. Let anyone who just showed up in your field or any story or any picture that just showed up in your field, because you know it did. <laughs> it's the beauty of all of us. It happened to me too, right? Okay. Let us imagine the person, place, or thing in front of us. And let us say, I'm sorry. And let us receive, I'm sorry. And as much as you can, for this moment, lay it down. Now, what I love about this is it says forgiveness and making amends and reconciliation. So once you say, I'm sorry, there may be something else that needs to be done. There may be an amend you need to make. There may be a new way of looking at life. There may be a way that you need to treat yourself differently so that you won't go into the things that you go into or you won't believe the things that you believe. Because truthfully, the secret is once we have laid it down, we have the whole universe again conspiring with us. Once we close the tiniest bit, we close the whole faucet. The faucet is at our disposal. We are at choice. Do you know that? Every moment you're at choice. If that faucet to the universe is closed, it's because we have closed it. Somewhere inside us, fear or pain or doubt or worry have shown up to close the faucet, to close this field of love and turn us into those, I would call them splitters, right? Let's call them splitters. Those of us, and when we do, splitting the field into good and bad and right and wrong. And you and me, instead of we, us are one. This is the power of your life. If you imagine that every time you need to make a decision or every time you need to go somewhere, any time you need anything, what happens? You turn within. And you open that field. You choose love. You say, love has this. Love has this. God, grace, holiness, Allah, Buddha, whoever it is. This field has this. I wonder what will happen. I wonder what could happen. I wonder what I want. I wonder what is wanted. Now we're in a field where all is balanced. The fact that our quantum physicists have been able to tell us, yes, this field moves in a pattern that is for good. So if you are part of that pattern, which you are, if you place yourself in the center, centered, maybe not as the center of the universe, rethink that, but as the, centered in this universal field, if you place yourself there, what capacity is missing? Nothing. Everything is where you are. So you have love and you have abundance and you have passion and you have grace and you have power and you have a voice and you have a heart and you are empowered and you may go speak and you may see with the vision that you see and you may enlighten and you may live and you may love and you do anything you want to do. You are reminded and remembering who you are. You can choose an identity that says good, bad, right, wrong all day long, right? Republican, Democrat, progressive, conservative. You can put, we can choose them all day long, right? What happens when we don't? What happens when every single person we walk up to, we look them in the eye and we say inside us, I love you. I love you. Or if they're hurting, we say, it wasn't us, but I'm sorry whatever hurt you. Have you ever done that for someone? It is so magical. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Hopa ono ono, right? 
as Ginger has made this beautiful song out of it so we can all hear it in our heads, right? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. I don't even have to know you to know that someone needs to say that to you. And someone needs to hear that from you. What does this give us? The most intense humility. Can you feel it? Can you feel what it takes to open your heart and say, I'm sorry. And if you didn't do it to the person in front of you, know you're doing it for all the other things you got away with that no one knew were you, that you did, or that people forgave you without you even asking. That happens all the time. I bet a whole bunch of you do that. Do you have people that do things to you, like cut you off or get in line in front of you or get a little pushy or whatever, and you just let it go? Raise your hand. I'd love to know, because I think all of you do that. That's what I mean. Do, and when you do that, how do you feel? Just take that you feel big, right? Like, wow, I feel big when I do that. I feel expansive. I feel like I'm kind of invisibly traveling on a plane that people can't see that I am so much more powerful than they know I am because I don't have to take it on as if it was done to me, right? So listen to how powerful these things of Rosh Hashanah, this, this holiday that we're calling the new year, these are all coming into our life because we've opened ourselves up interfaith and interculturally to receive what is this community up to this weekend and what have they been doing? Gratitude, of course, and thankfulness. Gratitude, just the overflow of energy that comes into us, everything do you honestly know that we actually don't deserve anything? We are everything. It comes through and as us because we are the energy of the universe. We are the creative flow. We are the infinite mind. We are all of it. All we have to do, honestly, is get out of the way. But not just that. We have to turn towards it. We have to turn towards it and say, I, I keep seeing the Lipton iced tea plunge and I'm not, it's like, right. And we're all giving away our age group because some people aren't laughing. So it's like this, this idea that we could just stand on the edge of the universe. You have your, anybody done a trust fall, right? Where someone behind you says, I got you. And you're like, <laughs> right. And you're standing there on the edge of the universe. And you say, yes, I surrender to gratitude. I of myself, I don't deserve anything. I just am everything. And it through me is everything as well. All I am and all it is. So from this place, imagine a world of no religion. Imagine a world of no possessions. Imagine... Yes, right? It's not hard to imagine. Once we've gotten out of our cars and our houses and we're sitting together in a big room and we're expanding into this space, we become one with it. Love is all there is. It was a unity day of world peace. It was unity's day of world, world day of prayer. Mm something like that this week. And we went to the Unity Church and we prayed together. And it was so beautiful. And I got to choose forgiveness. And I just, the tone of what lands in our bodies, if you can feel it, try to just bring it in right now. When you let something go, when you, okay, let's try this. So the lotus is the heart chakra, right? And the lotus has its roots in our first chakra, in our base chakra, in our connection to the earth, which can be the mud and the finding of our way and our, our beliefs and our struggles and our structures of life, right? 
And as that begins to grow, it comes up through our creativity. It comes up through our power center and it comes into our heart and we're getting ready to blossom and just don't blossom. Why not? Because I have too much against someone else or something else that hit me along the way and I need to push them out. Well, if you push them out, those little petals on that beautiful little lotus flower, just like, Whoosh. it feels like a little stone, right? A little stone in my heart. If you're lucky, there's a little red tiny thing in the middle, like the Grinch, right? Thing left that maybe can grow. No, we know it's always there and it will always grow again, but it's small and it's kind of stone-like because the petals have pulled in because of the pain of the pressure that they can't let go. Just like any one of us right here, right now can remember the pain of a not letting go moment. And it does not feel uplifting, does it? No, it's like, ooh. So what happens if we go in there, we're in that little heart chakra, and we let each thing go and we watch each petal. What is the Nyasin uh, poem? Something about the day it becomes too painful to stay as the bud. Nobody has it. Okay. Um, anyway, we blossom. And so once it gets too hard in there, too painful to stay as the bud, we begin to let go. I let go of my parents. I let go of my ancestors. I let go. I forgive myself. We get all the way to the center. And maybe this is where this is. The final one is I forgive myself for anything that I have done. Any, any judgments I have against myself. The judgments are the fastest way to close the bud of your blossoming heart. So let us breathe together and every single one of us at least find one petal that is beginning to let go. I don't want to push anybody through a journey they're not ready for. I'm not asking for over the top expressions of willingness, but pay attention to your willingness. And in the center of it all to the forgiveness of the judgments you've held against yourself and feel the beginning of freedom and light and love in the blossoming of this lotus. Respecting the process you're in, the divinity of your own work and your own march through life, the life you have, the choices you have made, we honor your divinity. We honor your process and we let it be yours. And so the invitation of these holidays and these ho high holy days, right? Holy days is to bring us back into wholeness, which guess what? Is holiness, which is wholeness. To bring us back together with the one. The one that is all of us and one. Through each other, one by one. We look into each other's eyes and we realize we are not separate. We are one. And so in this moment, invitation is to look to someone next to you. Find someone next to you if you don't have someone next to you. Take a deep breath and just look into someone's eyes. Without words. And with the thought, we are one. I love you. God bless you. Is there anyone that didn't have a partner? Did anybody sneak away? No? Good. Okay. Okay, now, can you feel it? Ready for some renewal? and some fresh starts, right? It's like, you can feel it. There's something ready inside us. Like, okay, what's next? And it's not spring, but it's renewal of a time where we get to dig in and decide what it is we want to plant, what it is we want to, what is it? What it is 
that's next for us, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It's never too late to make a fresh start. It's never too late to reinterpret a situation. And as they say, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. And there's two ways to do it, right? You can go right up over the top and pretend, or you can go right down through the middle and forgive everything. And remember all the lessons that you were given, all of the sacred contracts, all of those people who spent their whole life teaching you to stand up for yourself, right? All of those people who had to live the life they had to teach you how to stand up for yourself, right? Watch the judgments floating in, right? But it's true. We are given such gifts. The final step of forgiveness is thank you. And that is when you know it is done. Thich Nhat Hanh said, when there is peace, it is done. When there is not peace, it is not done. And so this is renewal. We're ready in renewal. And then family and community, and we sit with you today, and we just appreciate how much we've been seeing each other. Hello. How much we've been seeing each other, how much we've been playing together, how much music, how much joy, how much life has been in this community, how much love, how much grace, how much fun, how many moments of tears. Many of us were at Stephen's memorial yesterday at his funeral service, just calling in his blessing of his life. And what was the thing that was said a hundred times, if it was said once a thousand times, his smile. His breath into this field, his knowing of his place, that he was here to connect with his community, to love them and to bring them into his life. He went out of his way. He made people relate to him. Does anybody know that? If you don't know Stephen, you do know. If you do know him, you know it. And if you don't know Stephen, you know someone else like this, right? Who just made it their business to connect and connect and connect and connect and connect. And so he has flown the coop. He has elevated. And what I love about the Jewish tradition, which I'm just getting so much juice from Judaism, which is so fun this week, right? Is that the last thing we do for someone who has passed is to raise them up with our thoughts, see them as lifting in their in their transition, this is the moment where this is what, what can we do? What can we do when someone passes? We can lift them up. We can give them the buoying they need. We can be the wind under their wings. We can lift them up. And it is the last act that we do for them as humans that they can receive and they cannot pay us back. They cannot that does not mean their spirit isn't with us. It does not mean their love isn't still here. But it does mean in this tradition that they can't reach down and say, here, I owe you something for this, right? This is our last act. And so let us as a community, this man was so important to us. We loved him so much. And we found out at the service that his, his twin brother who lives in L.A., has the same mentor as I do, Reverend Dr. Michael Beckwith, is attending Agape, and they both had the same spiritual beliefs and did not know that about each other. Crazy, right? So let us take a moment to lift Stephen. Let us do this, this final act, even if you already did it with us graveside. And Paul did us the honor of being one of the pallbearers. Paul Bearer. That's Reverend Paul Bearer to you. Okay, Stephen's making us laugh while we do this, right? So we lift him up and we become the wind under his wings and we just lift him, Stephen. And we are so grateful with our gratitude, with our fullness, with our hearts. We know that we are one and we are not separate. And we know how much love you brought to each and every one of us. The twinkle in your eye, the smile on your lips that spoke to the love 
in your heart. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, for being here with us. Always. And then grappling with the concept of time. What will we do with our days? What will we give our life to? What will we live into? The concept that starting over starts now. And that you can choose and choose and choose and choose and choose again in this moment, where do I put my attention? Where do I put my time? And what fruits do I want to see come to me from this? So this is the value and the beauty of intercultural and interfaith intermingling. And we'll hear more about our Hispanic um, Heritage Month that will also give us this many gifts. And you know we're going to mine the field of Melissa here to give us some really great things in the next couple of weeks. So don't miss it. Right here and now, think of something, something that you would like to start over. And I'm going to ask uh, my husband, Wayne, to come and stand with me. And he wrote a poem, which some of you have seen, which I didn't see <laughs> right away um, in the last few days on this topic. Hi there. Hi. So this is rather uh, impromptu. And um, I want to say <laughs> that on my better mornings, I get up and do a little morning meditation. And sometimes I get inspired to write on those mornings. And little did I know that this poem would end up being supportive of this talk um, until just now. But here it is. <laughs> Fun to be married to me, huh? <laughs> I'm starting over, and it's not too late to create a new life, and not by going to Bali, as much as that would be lovely, or yet another retreat or workshop or transformational experience, as much as I might enjoy those, but right here, in this very moment, in this very situation, in this very place, in this very relationship. By making conscious choices to stop and drop the sad, tired, old stories, the shame of imagining myself is not enough, reclaiming my birthright to joy, reconnecting with my essence and the field of loving, which has never left me, which has been right here with me all along, only I have left it. Allowing all the feelings that come with being human including feeling sad, mad, scared, facing the very real losses in my life and transgressions large and small towards me then and now, and using these as doorways back to bliss and forgiveness to welcome them into the guest house and allow them to leave after tea because I'm starting over right now, right here in this very body, in this very life. And so it is. And so we just take this moment, all of us together, this nice collective breath. And we just allow. We just let go. We just let it be. The starting over. Whatever it is, small or big, doesn't matter. Starting over, remembering that there's no original sinner in you. That the original you, the essence you, the wholeness of you, the holiness of you, 
is always love. And all the capacities and all of the abilities and all of that which comes through that source is yours as soon as you embrace. As soon as we embrace, expand, and breathe, and love, it is ours. And so we do that together now in a collective breath. And we let it be. In the joy and the blessing of knowing the true identity of who you are, the grace, the love, the compassion, the kindness, the care, the power, the passion, the courage, the love, the delight, the beauty, the presence. That is you. That is us. That is all. We turn within and we bow to ourselves, knowing that we are bowing to all of humanity. within us, all of the kingdoms, all of the galaxies, all of the love. With the greatest gratitude of the remembering of this identity of the wholeness of who we are, we simply let it be. And so it is. This is a slideshow from our celebration last weekend. Norman took all these photos. Everybody's waiting on a little bit of a little chair with the mail up from the
Okay, so what I'd like to do really right now, and again, I told you there's going to be some surprises in this service. Um, Reverend Paul, would you join me? Um, and Reverend Marlene, would you join me? And then I'm going to ask a whole bunch of other people to join me up here who you just saw their names on the screen so we can make it to, and we're just, you guys just call out their names while I'm looking for my list. Um, mm, mm, Norman, took the pictures. Okay, Julia Fulmer, is she in the house? No, I want you to come on up. Come on up. Come on up. Julia Fulmer, Jody Kearney, Andy Daniels. Ha, ah, some people aren't here today. Marlene, Keith, I don't know what you're going to do with that camera, but come on up here. John Fulmer, Wayne Marshall, Melissa Romero. Uh oh, we have no one behind the board. <laughs> <laughs> and it works. <laughs> um, Nefertiti. Mike Newell, Bob Craven, Dana, Marty, and Kathy. Wakeham. Kathy Wakeham's on here. Well, anyway, so these are half of the people that it took to create this amazing concert. It was, without a doubt, one of the funnest parties I've ever been at. I was out of my body for quite a little bit of it. And I want you to know that the other half is you. And so I just wanted you all to be present for me to give Reverend Paul our piece of our heart. He was the he was the mastermind in 7 weeks of the impossible job of making this happen. So thank you. And if I've missed anyone, which is the tradition, <laughs> <laughs> um, that you will self stand up and acknowledge, let us acknowledge you. Is there anybody in the room that did something that was okay? We're going to let it go then. And Jeremy, he helped. Us. Oh, yeah. Come on, Jeremy. You yeah. could give us a little. Yeah. And you know what? That's just the perfect segue. Who else? Will you bring your friend with you, Jeremy? Ginger. Yes. Ginger was. Oh, you're supposed to be. But, yeah come join us of course ginger representing all the musicians and just because we have this moment and we're all standing here and we're all in love somebody has his eighth, eighth birthday and i really think it'd be a great day to sing happy birthday would you all like to join me in that Okay, so maybe Ginger yeah. should get us started. Happy birthday, birthday to you. And thank you for singing for us this morning. Say cheese. Oh, goodness. Cheese. When somehow I feel that that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> You've been replaced. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And we will just finish up the service with the last few things. But there are some really cool things. So don't leave us because we're still on it. Is it in Okay. okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So if every, every can you can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you, okay. So if everyone will take a nice deep breath, breathing in this abundance, this magic, this infinite possibility, knowing that we're starting from this point right here in our knowingness that we are completely 
supplied by the divine. That infinite possibility, that infinite presence that completely supports us. Knowing the financial abundance of the universe is ours by divine right. That we are one with it. That we're completely supplied. That we don't have to worry. That we can let go of lack and limitation and know that we are financially abundant. And we stand in that. We know it. We bask in that, in that knowingness. We let every other thought go, knowing that God is completely taking care of us. And in this knowingness, we give. We give from that, that space of abundance, that space of wholeness, that space of knowing that we are completely taken care of by God. And we give. We give abundantly to this consciousness, this entity that is the center for conscious living. So that we can be here every Sunday to share, to love, to remember the magnificence of who we are and each other is that we open our hearts, that we use this as a jumping off point for the rest of the week that is so joyous and loving and open and caring, that we give from that space of love in abundance, knowing that as we give, we do receive. And so it is. If you will repeat after me what you can find in your bulletin, the blessing of our offering. Thank you, God, for this abundance that is out to share. I bless this gift and give it to thee in gratitude and joy, knowing that as I give, I do receive. And so it is. So in great gratitude, giving thanks for this abundance that flows to CCL, this abundance that is open, is guided to us, this, is, this abundance that is ours by divine right, this givingness from this beautiful congregation that opens their hearts, opens their wallets, and gives in abundance to this wonderful entity that is CCL. We give thanks. Thanks for the love. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the guidance. And we are so grateful. And so it is. <laughs> okay, that's a first. I've never heard anybody say it that way. True, but I've never heard anybody say it that way before. All right. So... Um, we we'll move through the announcements as quickly as possible, but there's so much going on. There's so much fun to tell you about. So today, today, right after the service, although after a small period of time after the service at one o'clock at um, the home, 
on Cherry Lane in Cinnaminson. We will be having a potluck lunch and then there'll be a song circle. So um, you'll get a little taste of that during our final circle today. Please um, feel free to drop by, bring something to eat, to share with a friend. We'd love to have you. It'll be about some time of socializing and about probably an hour of singing together. And it's all fresh new music that we'll learn together. Very simple, just chanting, and it's super fun, and it sounds super beautiful after a really short period of time, so it's very gratifying. So if you're interested, we would love to sing with you. If you have the time today, just know that will happen again, so if you have something else, no worries. If we are not, uh, it is not a command performance at all. It is just in time for us to play together and enjoy each other. Um, then we want you to know that that slideshow is going to be up on Facebook with higher frequency as the background music. So you won't have Ginger playing it for you every single time, but you will be able to have the experience. Please, please put it out on your Facebook pages, put it out to your friends, show them what an amazing party we had because it was really good, right? Um, and then I'm gonna remind you again that we have prayer, live prayer on Zoom, Tuesdays through Fridays from 12 to one. And it is an opportunity to once again, cross over, start again, remind yourselves of all of these beautiful spiritual truths and get your week going and halfway through your day to kind of pop things open and see the mystery and the magic as it unfolds. So please join us for that. Otherwise, please submit your prayers um, to the CCL office. We pray over them. We have practitioners, 20 practitioners pray over them twice a week. So send them in anytime. And we would love to care for you spiritually. And that is our job. Um, uh, you may have noticed in your newsletter, there's a party. This, no, that was yesterday. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, men's group. Yeah, there was a party you missed. <laughs> if you didn't read your newsletter, sorry. Um, men's group tomorrow night. Um, and practitioner classes begin this week. Drum roll, please. Woo! We have a nice, beautiful, full class of some great students. We're also, um, for the first time, having students go through the first year of the program, what's called, um, what I made up and I'm trying to remember, um, prayer ministry certification. So after a year of classes, you'll get a prayer ministry certification and you will pray with the practitioners over the prayers. Uh, you won't have a practitioner a professional practitioner license at the end of two years, because that's something totally different. But this way you can get the benefit of the courses and the benefit of the inner work and the benefit of hanging out with some of your most favorite people. And we do it on Zoom and in person. So you don't even need a babysitter. How's that? Um, anyway, we do have registration in the newsletter. Oh, um, and on the back table. So uh, Marlene will take anything that you want to give her in that manner. Also, um, next Saturday is the United Nation, United Nations International Day of Peace. And if you were here for Dr. Ani's presentation, they will be meeting at the Imagine Circle in Central Park and the John Lennon uh, Garden Strawberry Fields. Um, and yes, that will be happening um, at 10, uh, 4 p.m. And it's in your newsletter. Um, and then uh, ah, we have a beautiful service for you. Um, next week, we'll be, uh, we'll be doing something cultural with our friend Melissa that she is now finding out about. And uh, the week after that, Regina will be doing, um, her, she, Regina DeBarberi, who was right there. Uh, okay, she had to leave. Um, is our animal chaplain. And she will do an animal blessing and a gong blessing also during that service. It's gonna be beautiful. And the three of us will be in Kansas City because we will be at the Anton Conference. So um, Reverend Christina will be joining uh, Reverend Regina in that. And um, the Love Orphanage group walk, which we support very wholeheartedly, again, in your newsletter, Sunday, Saturday, I'm sorry, October 7th. So it's coming up really soon. Any of you who know Haji, who's behind that beautiful consciousness of bringing funds to those children in Haiti in an orphanage that she has been able through, through prayer and through all the good works of all the people who love her, including many of you, keep open in some very, very harsh times. They had to leave the facilities and now they're trying to find some new facilities. 
it's been a pretty intense time there. So we hold in prayer for that community and for that, and also for Haji, who is in Tanzania, trying to do a fundraiser in the United States. So just, you know, all of us just holding her in the light during that. Uh, let's see. Um, ah, Marlene is teaching a class, Prosperity Made Simple. And there's a lot more to know about that. It's based on the teachings of the prosperity master, Edwin Gaines, whose favorite saying in my world is, I think it's convenient to fly first class. And she is a hoot and she has some very good spiritual principles. So that's a five-week class for spiritual laws of prosperity. You will find a sign up in the back and all that kind of stuff in your newsletter. Um, and I think, oh, and on the fifth, on the 15th of October and on the 5th of November, we have been told by this organization that we will not be able to be in this space. So we will be doing Zoom only services unless we find a better answer. So if any of you have a better answer, uh, we would love to know that. So um, we are at this point planning to do Zoom, Zoom services for those two. You will get a lot of notice in your newsletter and also in separate emails to make sure people don't come here and get stranded. But if you do, go to breakfast, have fun. Um, and then I just want to take a moment to thank the people in service today, um, physically creating this space for all of you and for all of us to join together. Alter. Kay Becknell, thank you so much. And also for being flexible as we landed in the interfaith. And Kathy Wakeham has created some interfaith things that you might want to come look at. And she, uh, Kay, so graciously found a way to display them on the altar. Thank you. Um, for the ushers today, we had Harmony and Kay. For media, John, Keith, Paul, and Wayne, and Ringo. And uh, yeah, uh, and Melissa. And Nefertiti on PS, that is a huge media team. Um, and Paul, who always helps um, set up John, Jane, and Harmony. PS of Nefertiti again, sorry. And um, refreshments. Right now, everybody turn around, stare at her. Peggy. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Arlene. All right. Is there anybody here for the first time? Yeah. Please stand, stand up. up. Oh. Is there anybody here Paul. who's having a birthday? Oh. Please oh, yeah. stand up. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh we ran away. Whose birthday is it? <laughs> Melissa, is it your birthday? <gasps> Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. You can stand up. You stand up for Jim. When's your birthday? Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. Wow. Well, let us all shine our lights onto these beautiful, beautiful, beautiful humans. Yep. Let it in. Receive. Remember, receiving is the first act of giving. If you cannot receive, you cannot give. So receive all of this love that we will now pour out to you. So repeat after me. Welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. Welcome to the Center for Conscious Living. We are a heart-centered spiritual community. We are a heart-centered spiritual community. And we open ourselves to you in love. We open ourselves to you in love. We recognize the perfection of God within you. We recognize the perfection of God within you. And we celebrate the joyous being that you are. And we celebrate the joyous being that you are. You are a radiant point of light. You are a radiant point of light. And we are blessed by your presence. And we are blessed by your presence. Welcome home. Welcome home. Thank you so much. Oh, it's the circle. Okay, let's circle up and let's see how big a circle we can make because we have a lot of beauty here today. It's Wayne, really. So will you guys stand on that side? I'll have Ginger and Wayne stand next to me. Look at this. Oh, look who's in the center. Don't, uh, in, in the center. Look at this beautiful circle. There we go. So, um, 
I'm not used to having this mic in my hand, especially not two Sunday, twice in one Sunday. Um, but I'm going to lead us in a in a song that'll give you a little sampling of what we're going to do later uh, in a smaller circle. And I've never done it with this many people, but we're going to try it out. And I've got a few people that know this song, and Ginger and Catherine are going to support me. Can you hear me? Um, so it's going to do call and response. That means I call and you respond. And when it's your turn, I'll we'll go like this. So it's your turn to respond. And when I'm singing, just listen. I'll go like this. Okay. The words the words are very simple. I'll um, I'll speak them, and Paul will like these because it's very, sort of like the uh, the words he uses. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Right. <laughs> Be open. Okay. Here it is. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. That's it. You learn those those words, you got it. So the song goes like this. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to possibility. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Listen again. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Your turn. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. One more time. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open, be open to the possibility. possibility. Okay, you guys got that. You got that good. So we, we got a part two, and this has no words, so it's super easy. And it starts starts up a little higher. It goes, I am, I am, I am, I am. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Aye, 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 aye. Let's try that again. Then. Call and response again. My turn. Aye, aye, aye. Your turn. Aye, aye, aye. My turn. Aye, 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 aye. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, all together now. Aye. I, 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 I. Okay, you guys are natural. But it's, From the top. Okay, now we're going to do something even trickier. And y'all, you guys are going to. No, no, no. We're going to sing it through once. All okay, the way through. Oh, that's right. All the way. All the way through. Okay, all the way through. Then we're going to split it up and do two, two parts. Okay, all the way through. From the top. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open, open to the possibility. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Okay. Wait, wait, no. Okay. All right, all right. Let's do it. You guys got it. So you're gonna do. He's gonna take this side of the room. You're gonna do. Be open, okay, Ginger I'll, and I. Be open. And after the second time through, be open. This yeah. side, we're oh. gonna start the <laughs> IA, and we'll keep the I the be open part going. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's see, because this sounds okay, really cool. So we'll start it with. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. One more time. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Keep it going. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Be open for something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Again. Now, be this open time, 
something one since you know your part feel free to walk around the room and look at each other just sing your part I I Get out of here. <laughs> Be open to something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Exactly. Be open to something wonderful to happen. And it did happen. Yeah. Be open to possibility. Oh, yeah. Be open. There's something wonderful to happen. Get your open to the possibility. Be open. There's something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Be open. There's something wonderful to happen. Be open to the possibility. Be open to something wonderful to happen. Okay. Be open to possibility. Woo! Woo! Good. I uh, I forgot to say one thing. That belongs to or is written by Debbie Nargi Brown, who is a nationally known song leader, and we got to meet her last year. She's great. Debbie Nargi Brown. Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's just connect the circle again. Let's connect the circle again. And let's all just take a collective breath together. Breathing in love. Breathing out possibility. And knowing that this is a day of possibilities. It is a day of joy, a day of peace, a day of connection. And it is this day that God made. So knowing that each and every light that is here shines a little bit brighter today. And we each take that light that is within us. And we touch all those that we see and speak and walk past and glance at. And it is that light that we share with the community. Knowing that this community is based in love, based in peace and understanding. Grateful for this community, for each and every light that is here. Grateful for all of those in service. Grateful for all of those being a part of our service. Whether you are here in person or you join us virtually, there's enough love for all of us. And taking one more breath together. And so it is. Are you ready? It's that time. It is that time. <laughs> if you will repeat after me, something wonderful is happening to me right now. It is this thing called life. Life is in my body. Life is in my mind. 
Life is in my feelings. Life's Life is in all my activities. I receive it. I share it. I am it. And I accept it just the way that it is. Thank you, life. And accepting all these wonderful gifts, we say, yeah.